It's an easy transition to turn to our next session, which will be led by Dr. Ryan Padrez. Dr. Padrez is a clinical associate professor of pediatrics at the Stanford School of Medicine and a member of the Maternal and Child Health Research Institute, as well as being a member of the Leadership Council for the Stanford Center on Early Childhood. In the context of this next session, however, his key role is going to be as medical director for the primary school, a new learning model in East Palo Alto, which integrates health and education. Dr. Padrej will give us a brief introduction to the school and then invite other representatives of the school to join him to continue the discussion. And the bios for all speakers are in your programs. Dr. Padrez? Terrific. Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to be here. It's an uh, exciting day that we've been talking about for a long time. And, and I'm really just thrilled for the invitation here to wear my hat as the medical director at the primary school to share a little bit more about this work. Um, and, how I've really just had the privilege to work with fantastic uh, colleagues and teammates over the last seven years to, to build this model. And in just a minute, I'm going to invite some of those colleagues up here to share in their voice uh, more about the model, more about the school, and, and some of the successes and challenges we've had. Um, so, but my, my hope is in this panel uh, to just give you guys a glimpse of a community-based school model that we're trying to roll up our sleeves and do this work. We're trying to integrate across healthcare and education, trying to think about new models to support families in a two-gen way. And I'm not gonna pretend we've got it right. We're still learning. We've, um, we're uh, making lots of mistakes, as Phil alluded to early in his talk. We're recorrecting, we're iterating, and, um, and we're, we're excited to continue to partner with our families and our staff to, to how, how we can build this model to be um, the best uh, possible and spread those learnings to other communities and be part of the system's change. So, um, but first, let me just set the context of the school, and I think to do that, I think it's good to sort of share a little bit more about um, how we see the problem. So the first is, at the primary school, we believe that every child, when they have the right team of supports around them, can be well and thrive. And that we also believe that families and children rely on our healthcare and education systems, in part, to build that team. But in sort of preaching to the choir here, we know that, unfortunately, our public systems have created silos that make building that team very difficult. Our early education sector, which we're going to talk so much today about, healthcare, K-12, are siloed for a lot of different reasons. And the, really, this places the burden on the families to navigate these. And so for any parent out there that's navigated trying to get speech therapy for their child or services for learning differences or mental health services, they've navigated these systems, and they know how challenging they can be. And so sort of in, in nod to the same visual that actually Phil Fisher shared in the very beginning, our, our solution is how can we take a, a family-centered design where we put the family and child at the center and rest this in a school model where some of these silo systems can come together, where our healthcare, K-12, and early education can start to work with each other for the benefits of that family and child rather than sort of pointing fingers. Our vision is can we do this? Can we build this game-changing school model? But also really important that I want to acknowledge is as we're doing this work, we want to be mindful of, of the costs. And, and how we can do this such that it can be scaled and spread in other communities and that can be, and be paid for by public systems. And that's hard work and that creates a lot of tensions to decisions we have to make. So let me just tell you about where we are right now and a couple key things to our approach and then I'll invite the panelists up. So we are actually serving now uh, two communities in Northern California. Our flagship site has been in East Palo Alto for seven years and we opened up this last year a, a second site in the East Bay in South Alameda County um, it's just a preschool site and an early uh, pre-preschool services right now. We serve children. We start serving children around 12 months of, of age and serve all the way up to 11 years old. We have about 440 students across the two campuses right now. We hope that we can serve, as we talked about before, even in the prenatal space all the way through adolescence. Um, we recruit our, um, and ask our families to join the school via a lottery, and we really rely upon our community partners to share with us families that they think would benefit most from the model, and we, we run a lottery. And we've been really uh, fortunate to have some partners out there across the country that have started to learn more about different aspects of our work and are taking it and learning with us um, across the country. So with that, these are the three things that I hope the audience takes away from what we're doing here at, at the primary school, which is we are trying to build a school model that's trauma-informed, culturally, 
culturally responsive and really authentically walking what whole child approaches could be. And yet we have three things that we're really investing our innovation dollars into, which is starting early, how we partner with parents, and how we take this integrated approach. So let me just tell you a little bit more about these three. So in terms of starting early, um, we have this audacious goal of can we support our children and families to be preschool ready? Let's not wait till kindergarten ready. And can we start serving um, students and families? Um, right now it starts at 12 months of age. We hope to even start a little younger. And we do this in sort of twofold. The first part is really supporting them with whole child screening and identifying if our, our, some of those students and children um, may need and qualify for services that are available in our community. But then we know that there are many uh, that don't qualify or there are many programs that aren't quite meeting the needs, particularly around language and social emotional uh, development. And so we offer some two generational programming. One that we're really proud of is called Bridge to Preschool. And this is really about fostering the, that relational health between a parent and child or caregiver and child to, to grow the language and social emotional skills and executive function skills for, for our students. We're, we're excited about this. We see a lot of opportunity in, in our returns on investment in this, these um, um, services for our students for our education model. The next is how we partner with parents. We, we believe that when our parents are well, and we've talked a lot about parents so far today, that our children can thrive. And we do this really with a, a unique and beautiful program called our Parent Wellness Coaching Program. We're gonna hear more about that from some of our panelists here. It's a program that builds relationships. It builds community. It really builds self-efficacy skills in our, in, our, in our families. It's a coaching model um, where we connect with our families to help them meet their goals. And we're, we're really proud of this work. We're proud of this uh, a, a partnership with our families in the school model. And the final, final aspect is, as a pediatrician, this is the part that I get excited about, is how do we leverage a school platform to really think about an integrated approach? How do we break down those silos between education and healthcare? We start that with our partnering with our pediatric medical homes around our school campuses. Um, so part of this is asking what does healthcare need to do a little differently to work with our early education system and work with our, our actual elementary K system as well. The other half is, and then what do we need to ask our schools to do in terms of building the right multidisciplinary teams to partner with healthcare, um, where we can really best address those preventative services for children? And my focus, laser focus, is in how can we screen, identify, and support any health barrier to learning for a student in our school so that it's not a detriment to their, to their learning. So to just to give you a better schematic of our, of our healthcare work, we have two sites, as I mentioned, East Palo Alto and the East Bay. And East Palo Alto, our clinic, is we're really proud to have partnered over the last seven years with Ravenswood Family Health Center. We have some of our colleagues here in the audience from Ravenswood. And again, I want to acknowledge this is not building a school-based health clinic in our schools. This is about how we let Ravenswood and our partner in the East Bay, Kaiser Permanente, provide the medical services the best they can. What, what the magic is, how do we work as a team? How do we communicate better? What are different systems of communication to develop holistic understanding of what students um, and, the, and their patients may need? So that's a quick flavor. I know it's a lot. We're going to be around for questions uh, at lunch. Um, but I more importantly want to bring up our guests here and my colleagues. So first, I'm going to invite Kendall Easter to come up. So Kendall is our, one of our school leaders. She's uh, dean of culture at the primary school. I also have Valentina Elo Viegas to come up. She's one of our founding parent wellness coaches and now our director of our two gen programming. And we also have um, Guadalupe Pirueta to come up, who is one of our parents. Felt like, let's hear it from a parent uh, about what does our school really look like. So come on up, please. Thank you. And we also have um, Sergio helping us out with interpretation for Guadalupe. So thank you, Sergio, for being here. Um, so, all right, without further ado, so Kendall, I'm going to start with you. Um, you've been at the primary school for a long time, yeah. held lots of different um, hats as a leader of our, of our preschool, uh, uh, holding a co-principal role, and now taking on this role of dean of, of, of culture. Tell us why you're excited to take on this role and maybe what you've really found inspiring about our ECE model. Yeah, I, and also I want to acknowledge it's the session right before lunch. I know how our students are with the class right before lunch. <laughs> so. If you need to wiggle, that's perfectly fine. Um, I'm super excited about my role as a Dean of Culture because at its core, it's really about the power of relationships. And I feel one of my primary responsibilities is to make sure students are 
given the opportunity to practice and build the skills needed to establish healthy relationships, both with themselves and with others. And this work needs to start at an early age. And I think what's so beautiful about the primary school is that even though our classroom doors open for preschool age children, the work is happening far before that. And so we have our zero to three programming um, that has play groups and parent circles and opportunities for students to start to practice what does it mean to be in a setting with other students. And I think what's magical about the work that we do with the school programming and the zero to three programming is how the zero to three program will incorporate different rituals and routines that we have in the school um, within their parent groups and within the play groups for the zero to three. And so the students will come into their preschool classrooms on those first days of school and already feel comfortable and familiar with some of the rituals that we have from what does it sound like when an adult comes to provide some language on how to handle a social conflict or how do we hold the community circle with mindfulness breathing and wishing well to students who are absent or taking a moment to just decompress and disengage some of the stress that comes with transitioning into the classroom. Um, those rituals and that um, through line has made, a, made the transition from zero to three into preschool as seamless as possible. Um, I think another big part of my role is thinking about how do we ensure our staff truly understand and believe that all behaviors are forms of communication. And this is a belief that must be true for how we think about the behaviors of our littlest ones all the way through our 11-year-olds and fifth graders now. And I know that um, it's something that has made a big difference in how we think about what does it look like to have a trauma-informed practice and to be culturally responsive and having those conversations with our, preschool with our preschool teachers and with our zero to three um, staff, it really helps to make sure that this is something that's foundational to our work. Thank you, Kendall. That's great. So Valentina, I'm gonna come to you now. You're a therapist. You've worked with uh, families suffering um, significant trauma for a lot of your career, um, many of in our, in our community here. You know, I'd be curious, to, what got you excited to come to the primary school and, and help us build out this parent uh, program? Um, several things, and let's see if I can do this well in English. Um, but the first one was to the possibility of creating a different system. Um, as a therapist, I was often charged to fix the child. And I was working in wraparound services, serving children with very, very high needs. And it was very clear that the system was paying a lot of attention to the child, funding a lot for the child, and was often forgetting those adults, those people, those systems around the child. So I got really excited to be able to actually change that and like and have a better working hypothesis where we could center the well-being of the adult that is caring for that child to prevent people like me from hopefully existing in the future, because who needs a trauma therapist, right? Like that's not a cool thing to be. And, we, and, and, and when we actually center by design um, the well-being of the adult, we start making um, some Step, we start taking some steps towards um, ensuring that children are better and are well. And um, I also got really excited about the possibility of moving away from the very typical way of seeing communities of color as in need of case management, in need of someone coming to meet their needs, in need of a referral, to actually create a model where we partner with families, where we really are balancing power dynamics and then centering the power, the knowledge, the capacity, and honestly, like the just agency of a family in the relationship between a provider and a family. And then um, that's why we made then the decision, because I mean, I'm a therapist, I could have very easily been like, okay, we're gonna do therapists with everybody. But instead we made the decision to actually use the coaching model. When we sit down with the family in a coaching model, we're actually balancing power dynamics and partnering in a way that allows their power and their capacity to be at the center. And um, we also made very intentional choices about who those coaches were, because it could, again, very easily be PhD people um, with lots and 
love you all, with lots, <laughs> with lots of career and books read and et cetera. But how about we actually center the well-being of our communities with, the, with our communities? And therefore, our coaches are women of color that are part of the communities that have been having experiences similar to the ones that our families have had. And um, we're seeing actually good results so far. So, um, and shameless plug here, because I'm in a room with really intelligent people, and I'd be really dumb if I didn't take advantage of this. We, I just want to plant a little seed of, we are always looking to see what we can do better, learn what, what we could improve, and see what we're doing, what of what we are doing helps who. Um, and in that vein, um, the early successes that we've had have been really high attendance to everything that we do with families, very deep relationships that um, go beyond the transactional hello or here's the referral or here's the need that we can meet for you, um, really high satisfaction in all the program that we've done. And then we, the thing that to me is the most important Parents are reporting that they're building effective networks of support that are carrying their well-being well beyond the programming that we're doing and the relationships that we're building as an institution. Great, thank you, Valentina. Before we go to Guadalupe, can you just give the audience a brief picture of what does the parent wellness coaching look like for a family? Like, how often do they meet? How big are the groups? Yes, um, so um, each, each family at the primary school receives a wellness coach. Um, and that person accompanies the family through their experience with us. As Ryan was sharing from when the child is 12 year, months old to um, 11 years old so far. And um, we, uh, we offer individual coaching and group coaching. Group coaching happens um, in the Stereo 3 program weekly and for periods of time. And in the, when, once the children and families hit the school age time, it, it happens monthly. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. No, that's, that's how I think that's helpful for everybody to hear. So Guadalupe, you've been a, a parent and part of this school for many years. You know, I'd love to hear more about your experience in the parent wellness coaching program and how it's impacted, you know, your life and your ability to, to care for your son. Um, bueno, realmente para mí, antes que nada, es un honor estar aquí, de uh -huh. verdad. It's an honor for me to be here. Estar en este programa ha sido una experiencia excelente. Being in this program has been an excellent experience. Yo empecé en este programa con mi hijo cuando él tenía tres años y I, ahora tiene nueve años. I started this program with my children, was, when my child was, my son was three years old, and now he's nine. Con este programa me he dado tiempo y el espacio um, para mí, para conocerme en lo y Y se los digo porque en lo personal no me ocurría. O sea, yo me podía enfocar en todo, en todos, y menos en mí. So, this, um, it has given me time and space to know myself, which personally did not occur to me before. I wouldn't give myself time and explore my potential. I will focus on everything except on myself. Al venir a los grupos y hablar con uh, mi coach, me empiezo a conocer a mí misma, uh, mi estado emocional, y empiezo a explorar mi potencial, empiezo a entender que sí soy capaz y que sí puedo lograr lo que me propongo y puedo ser mejor para mí y para mi familia. Y así te vuelves, uh, en lo personal, yo me vuelvo, lo creo, que me vuelvo un mejor ejemplo para mis hijos. So coming to the group and listening to my coach speak, I began to know myself, my emotional state, and start to explore my potential. Understanding that I am capable, that I can accomplish anything that I set myself to, and be the best for myself and for my family. And that way, I become a better role model, to, to say I do a, a better role model. Uno de mis temores siempre era cometer errores. One of my fears was always Quiero making a mistake. Who so. doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> Y siempre estaba buscando las respuestas fuera, que me dijeran qué hacer. I was always looking for answers elsewhere to, let, to, to be told what to do. <laughs> Pero cuando salgo de, esto, de, de estos grupos, salgo con una mentalidad totalmente diferente, sabiendo que puedo aprender de mis errores y que puedo intentarlo nuevamente y que puedo eh, encontrar mis propias respuestas. 
So after a group session, I live with a different mentality, knowing that I can learn from my mistakes, that I can try it again when things don't go my way and that I can find my own answers. Yo creo que uno de los ejemplos eh, y del resultado, sigo aprendiendo totalmente, pero uno de los ejemplos es el estar aquí. Yo no me lo hubiera imaginado. Si a mí me lo hubieran dicho anteriormente, no lo hubiera creído. Y estoy aquí. Oops, sorry, perdón. ¿Lo podía repetir otra vez? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry, I'm going to translate. I'm going to translate um, for what, what she just said. I'm going to cry, actually. Um, and Don't she's cry. saying, like, one, one of the okay. examples of that, of, of me um, having changed and having been able to explore myself is actually being sitting here. I would have never imagined in my life that I would sit here uh, and be having these conversations and talking to you all. Y entonces ahora, ahora le transmito esto a mis hijos, um, la seguridad de una mamá confiada, informada y que llega a sus propias respuestas, porque me conozco a mí misma, porque yo no le puedo pedir a mis hijos que solucionen sus, uh, sus problemas, que aprendan que incluso que aprendan de sus propios errores, que crezcan, que se desarrollen, que desarrollen su potencial. Si yo, como mamá, como ejemplo, no estoy haciendo lo mismo. And so I pass all this into my children, the confidence of an informed mother who arrives at her, at her own answers because she knows herself. I can't expect my children to solve their problems, to learn, to grow, and to develop their potential if I'm not doing the same for myself. Honestamente, después de los grupos, yo me voy a casa sintiéndome súper. Y eso es, honestamente, me voy sintiéndome súper bien. Um, pues compartí con mi comunidad, recibí una lluvia de ideas y oí las experiencias de otros padres que me ayudan a crear mis propias respuestas y explorar mi propio potencial. After the group sessions, I go home feeling great because I share with my community, brainstorm, hear the experience of other parents that help me create my own answers and explore myself and potential. Yo creo que una de las cosas que más me, me, me motiva a mí es ver este grupo de, de... One of the things that motivate me the most is see this group. Este grupo que se compromete, que, que busca lo mejor para nosotros. Y eso a mí me motiva porque yo me. puedo seguir siendo mejor ejemplo aún para I can be the better role. Thank you, Guadalupe. Thank you. Thank you. So I got one more question for each of you here, and then, we, so Kendall, we've you know we've made investments in our parent wellness coaching model. It's, um, I'd love to hear from your perspective on the school side. You know, how how is it collaborating with these parent wellness coaches, and how's it impacting you know, your your approach at the school? Yeah. It's, it's truly everything. <laughs> um, I, before coming to the primary school, I was a preschool and pre-K teacher. And I remember the overwhelming feeling of, like, how am I already too late, right? And how is it that the task we're being asked to do is not, it's not just teaching academics. There's so much more to this child. Um, and it's daunting <laughs> to think of the number of hats you have to wear to, as a teacher to serve and meet those needs. At the primary school, you have a multidisciplinary team, one of those members being the parent wellness coach. And the way this model helps to really look at the whole child and their families and think about what are the goals that we're setting, what are the conversations we're having, the parent wellness coach really helps to add this layer and give insight into the context of the family, what's going on at home, what might be happening for the family, what are potential barriers that we need to be mindful of when we're thinking of different interventions or how we just show up for the student each day. And so I, I'm often moved when we have something called our children's circles, which are basically like, I like to say it's like the parent-teacher conference on steroids because <laughs> it is literally all of the child's circle and that family circle coming together to think about how can we best support the child in the classroom. Um, and it's parent wellness coach, but we also have the opportunity to work with our health team as well. And so, you know, just recently I was in a children's circle where it was the parent wellness coach, it was the teachers, it was the doctor, it was uh, the whole circle around the child to think about how can we make sure this student feels successful. Um, and I think what's also true to name is that it's both the most beautiful thing about our work, having this team, and it also comes with challenges because there's brilliant people 
all experts in their fields and all coming with different insight and opinions on how we might meet the needs of the child. Is it a sensory need? Is it um, due to trauma? Is it an academic need? And so coming to the table, there's a lot of fruitful conversations around how do we work best together to meet those needs and to see the whole child, but it, it can be complicated as well. Thank you, Kendall. Yeah, it's, it's not easy work. So let's, let's talk about healthcare for a second here. We'll end on health and, and mental health. So Guadalupe, um, you know, our school model is trying to bring in health and education together. How have you experienced this as a parent at our school, especially who has a child who has some health needs? Um, es, es la verdad, un, un, es muy lindo que haya una conexión entre la salud y lo académico, definitivamente. That it's, it's very nice. It's very sweet that there's a connection between health and academic. Ya, yeah. me da tranquilidad saber que el equipo entero está uh, al tanto de, de las necesidades uh, de mi hijo, pues um, sobre todo porque mi hijo um, ha necesitado atención médica desde pequeño. Okay. So knowing that the school provides support and that the entire team is aware of what my child needs in terms of health, especially since my son's needs were very difficult. Y que haya una enfermera en la escuela que es el vínculo con la clínica y está atenta a que el cuidado sea de calidad, eso es sin duda, sin duda es invaluable. That there's a nurse in the school who is in connection with the clinic and is attentive to the fact that the experience and that the care of, of a quality is invaluable. Y justo, justo su nombre es Sandra y her ella está Sandra. aquí y me gustaría que levantara la mano. I would like her to raise her hand. Um, gracias, Sandra. Gracias, Sandra. Verdad. Um, uh, me genera tranquilidad y confianza saber que la escuela está al pendiente de la salud de mi hijo y que los niños reciben chequeo dental, uh, ojos, oídos, y eso es sin duda excelente. It gives me peace of mind and confidence knowing that the school is aware of, of my children's health. Uh, that the children receive um, ear exams, uh, their eyes, their teeth, and you don't have to ask yourself. Um, y durante este proceso también he aprendido que así la escuela se preocupe por la salud de mi hijo. Mi tarea es continuar abogando, um, abogando por lo que sé que mi hijo necesita y otros niños. But during my process, I also learned that the school cares about my son's health. It is my task to continue advocating what, what my son's needs and others' needs. For example, evaluations additional para encontrar maneras de apoyarlos mejor en las clases. For example, additional evaluations to find ways to better support them in class. Y lo bonito es que las soluciones las encontramos juntos. Pero me toca a mí asegurarme que el sistema me rinda cuentas y me dé y le dé lo mejor a mi hijo. And the nice thing is that, that we find solutions together, uh, but it's up to me to make sure that the system is accountable and gives my son the best. Porque um, yo no qui porque yo quiero ver esos resultados. Because no, I want to see results. No quiero que se queden solo en conversaciones y Y en realidad yo soy de las que no me rindo. O sea, ahí estoy. I don't want things to stay in conversation, so I never give up. I'm always there. I know. Thank you, Guadalupe. Uh, thank you. Pero para finalizar, de to verdad, finalize. quiero decir que mi experiencia ha sido excelente a lo largo de estos años y pienso que vale la pena apostarle, apostarle a escuelas y programas como estos. Honestamente, como mamá, digo que vale la pena. And finally, I want to say that my experience has been excellent over the years, and I think it's worth betting on schools and programs like this, like Mother said. Thank you, thank you. Okay, last question. <clears throat> so, Valentina, wearing your therapist hat again, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how do you think about our, our two-gen approach, our parent wellness coaching, you know, is a way of supporting families as a mental health intervention. Yeah, so when I think about this, I think in two buckets. The first one is the individual, the person as an individual, and the second one is that same individual in relationships to a group and to a community. And so when focusing on the individual, there's very strong evidence that says and talks about how 
focusing on the well-being of the adult actually is a strategy to mitigating and preventing the impact of ad adverse childhood experiences later on for both children, but also for adults, because we've also gone through, I cannot curse, through difficult things. <laughs> we've also gone through difficult things ourselves, and we also need that support to mitigate those, th that impact that we have had as adults now. And the second one is that by design, creating group spaces where um, there's non, no judgment, where the group is reliable and is dependable, then allows for things like what Alupe is saying to actually become true for not only one person, but the collective. And so by, by nature, these spaces then become healing spaces because instead of using that time to teach the community of color the things that they don't know, teach them parenting approaches. And I want to be clear, there's space for that. But here we're just trying to do something a bit different. And so instead of using that approach of let's teach you, let's tell you what you don't know, we center it in let's explore this. Let's explore your potential. Let's see who you are. Bring, please, bring your, please bring your very important and knowledge to, the, to this community so we can grow together. And um, we have been seeing early successes in the sense that um, again, we are always open to help, um, but we, we're seeing that our families are increasing parental resilience, that they're learning to recognize um, a lot better, the impact, recognize the impact and address the, the um, toxic stress in their, families and, and in their families and in their communities and in relationship to their other relationships. And again, the most important thing for me is that they're building effective networks of support well beyond the, the small, small, large things that we're doing at the primary school. And so when thinking about all of this and very inspired by the panels that, um, specifically the first panel that we had today, um, these spaces, what they do is that they ultimately are interrupting the cycle of isolation and trauma in communities and by virtue are also addressing the internalized oppression that as communities of color, we carry with ourselves all the time. And shameless plug here, um, as I heard, as I hear all of these lovely conversations about what do we do and like, and we're lo lo having all this hope and having all these um, things about e equity and equality and et cetera, et cetera. When we do not do our work to address our internalized oppression, we will never actually go to a place of uh, for reals resolution. And so if by design we can create those spaces where people can look at themselves, so they then in turn look at their children and stop accepting the BS that society has put on them and can, as Guadalupe say, actually know what I need is different from what you're offering me, that's when we can actually create empowered communities that have eradicated that level of internal oppression that systems have created. Advertually on an advertually. Thank you, Valentina. Shameless plug done. <laughs> okay, well, I know lunch is next, so um, let's just, uh, big round to our panels again. They, uh, they, were not, they were not pleased with me when they saw the size of this room this morning and what they were going to have to do. So um, they did terrific. And, and just in all, in shameless plug, but we are, we are still on this work together. We're looking for partners. We're looking at all types, community partners, funders, other um, you know, scholars that can come help us learn, measure to learn, measure to improve. And, and we're excited to, to be part of this center. So thank you. Let's go eat.